apartments, condos, single family, duplex, high rise, all words meaning the same thing, shelter, home. The word has great meaning to people, comfort, security, the backbone of a normal productive life. But not everyone enjoys the comforts of home. There are between 600,000 and 3 million people in America today who are in need of simple housing. The number reaches 1 billion worldwide. Staggering figures. Some are victims of natural disasters, fires, floods, earthquakes, events beyond anyone's control. They all have one thing in common, one basic human need, shelter. Now there's a practical solution to this need. A new corporation, InterShelter, has the proven technology to provide inexpensive, temporary, transitional housing for the homeless, emergency shelter for disaster victims, portable shelter for the military. It's a dome called the Omnisphere. Over the next few minutes, I'll show you why the Omnisphere is the answer to so many needs. Perhaps you've seen these Omnispheres on the news. This village for the homeless in downtown Los Angeles, known as Genesis One, has caught the attention of the world. From ABC, this is World News Tonight. The skyline of downtown Los Angeles looks a little different these days. Los Angeles is doing more than feeding the homeless tonight. It's creating innovative ways to house them. This is how the homeless live on the streets of Los Angeles every day, outside of the shelters and projects like Genesis One. And even though there are up to 100,000 homeless people in the county, this holiday season, some of LA's homeless have a roof of sorts over their heads, right in the middle of what used to be a parking lot, an experimental community for the homeless has sprung up, housed in a series of futuristic-looking domes. Only last month, the 24 residents of the Genesis Project were living on the street at this homeless encampment just a few feet from where they are now. Private businesses donated the money. The city provided the land. The homeless themselves helped erect the domes. This is what we call first step transitional affordable shelter housing for the chronic homeless. This is not home. This is a step on the way home. Within a year, the people here are expected to leave the village, ideally on the road to reestablishing their lives with jobs, even homes of their own. Ron Claiborne, ABC News. Larry Carroll, NBC News. Linda Joyce, CNN, Los Angeles. These domes provide more than just shelter. They provide a base from which to operate. Let's look at some of the features that make the Omnisphere so unique. The Omnisphere was designed by Craig Chamberlain, a student of Buckminster Fuller. Craig took Fuller's vision of the geodesic dome and put it to modern use. It combines the best features of a tent, a tent's flexibility and portability, with the rigidity of a standard building. Now, what are some of the other advantages of this design? First, it's low in cost. It's less expensive than any other form of shelter except a tent. Next, they're easy to assemble. It takes no more than three people, a stepladder, a screwdriver and a wrench, and a couple of hours. And because they're temporary, they can be disassembled easily and quickly for storage or for transport. These domes are strong and durable. They've been certified to meet Los Angeles building structural codes and have proven their ability to withstand the forces of nature. They came through the Los Angeles earthquake with absolutely no damage, and they've also withstood hurricane force winds. They're watertight and virtually maintenance-free. The domes can be linked together to form additional living or working space. Because of their relatively light weight, these domes can be stacked and packed easily, allowing them to be shipped wherever they're needed. The 20-foot domes on assembled pieces can fit into the back of a pickup truck or into an 8 by 8 by 4 foot container. And look how a 14-foot dome can be used as a vacation cabin. Each dome comes with one door and can accommodate up to five windows. The 20-foot dome is coated fiberglass with an internal height of 12 feet. It has 314 square feet of floor space which is the equivalent of three 9 by 12 rooms, a remarkable use of space. Dome customers have mounted omnispheres on anything from concrete pads to wooden decking to just bare earth. A low-cost flooring system is in development. Other options include solar panels for electricity, additional windows, and we offer plans for interior improvements, including the ones you've seen here. 
The Omnisphere is rust-proof, rain-proof, and provides protection from the natural elements. An insulated version can even withstand Arctic temperatures. The affordability and accessibility of these domes has been the answer to many a challenging situation. Besides Genesis One, the village founded by Ted Hayes and underwritten by Arco for the homeless in downtown Los Angeles, these domes have been used as emergency shelter for the disaster victims of Hawaii's Hurricane Iniki and for Red Cross relief centers for the survivors of the 1987 San Francisco earthquake. The U.S. Forest Service has used these domes as shelters for firefighters, and in Alaska, Exxon used them as communication centers during the Valdez cleanup operation. Omnisphere buyers have found a variety of uses for their domes, temporary offices, storage, spa covers, greenhouses, campground cabins, concession stands. Just let your imagination go, and I'm sure you'll think of even more uses for this unique product. Remember, these remarkable domes are affordable, they're easy to assemble, strong, portable, and they're available now for all types of climates. To find out what's best for your shelter needs, contact InterShelter, area code 907-789, 9273 and learn about this revolutionary new concept in low-cost portable shelters. At InterShelter, we shelter the world. The state of Alaska is grappling with stabilizing its economy in an ever-changing geopolitical world. When the legislature is in session, you need to know firsthand about decisions being made that will affect your lives as Alaskans for years to come. I recommend watching Capitol View with Terence O'Malley and Annabelle Lund. This is Terence O'Malley in the state capitol. Dome sweet dome could become a catchphrase if these fiberglass structures catch on in Alaska. The dome developers contend they offer advantages over conventional housing, making them an attractive solution to problems that have perplexed mankind since he moved out of caves. Perhaps their strongest selling point is portability. As you can see, they're put together very quickly. This three-man crew, two of whom had never seen a dome before being hired for the job, put this one together in under two hours. The military has expressed an interest in purchasing the bulletproof structures to act as the tent of the future. Also, the Red Cross is considering using them as temporary shelter for emergency situations. Well, we have three major markets. We have the government and institutional market. We have a rural bush housing, and we have the retail market. We are real excited about the government and institutional markets. We were in Washington, D.C. about two months ago. This could be the tent of the future for the United States military. Presently, the United States Army, which is the most sophisticated army in the world, uh, uses laser bombs and smart weapons and see at night glasses to shelter their troops are using the same thing that the Roman legions used, which is a piece of cloth, a tent over their heads. And they are screaming and demanding for something more sophisticated and higher tech. And we walked through the door and they responded uh, ecstatically. Um, the ones we make for the military uh, will go up as fast as a tent. And once it's up, it's a bulletproof bunker. It will uh, be made of Kevlar. The National Guard of Alaska is already sold on the domes, envisioning a variety of uses for them. General John Schaefer at a recent battalion commander's convention in Juneau. Uh, we have uh, probably a lot of uses that we could put uh, a building like this to uh, all over the state. I think it's good enough that we'll look at uh, securing some funds to get a few of these to test them in various parts of the state under varying... Uh, weather conditions and uses. I was going to say, what, what kinds of things, how will you go about testing it? What types of uh, endurance tests and whatnot would you put it through? Well, we, we have right now a dry storage uh, problem all over the state because our armories are small and, and our units are, are big and, and, uh, and we've gotten a lot more equipment. We have no place to store them. So uh, that's the first place we'd, we'd look at uh, this, uh, just an additional temporary storage building. Uh, where we where we lack storage. Uh, after that, then we'd look at uh, utilizing these buildings in a uh, mission orientation. Uh, either you know for for assisting us with our combat missions, uh, uh, something more permanent than a tent, and uh, and also our uh, our uh, emergency uh, services role because uh, you know we we have that responsibility too to assist the communities uh, during uh, disasters and it may have a real, you know, valid use there. 
them. They can use it for uh, support facilities uh, in the back combat zones, uh, for storage, for uh, command post headquarters, for mash style hospital units. You can connect the domes together uh, as many as you want in any configuration you want. And unlike tents, they're dry, they're warm, you can sterilize them, uh, and they're, they're sturdy. Uh, tents last six to eight months of continuous use. These will last 30 years. What about for emergency situations? Well, that's, that's another real big use for it. Um, we can put enough of these in a Hercules aircraft and go into a disaster site to, to build a, a whole town in a matter of a day, a small town, obviously. Um, we, these break down, as you see, uh, and stack on top of each other like Pringles potato chips, and so they're very, very compact once they're down, and they store very easily. So what they're excited about, and the National Guard is involved with, with emergency services, too, is that you can warehouse them for an unlimited amount of time without worry of rot or mill do like tents and when you have a disaster situation you can throw them in a plane and, and have them set up in a day. You can use some for uh, sleeping quarters, you can use some for medical and food supplies, you can use some as command posts to, uh, to stage the emergency services and you can use some uh, uh, for medical uh, places to take care of the injured people. The domes are 20 foot in diameter, 12 feet high, with 314 square feet. The lightweight Omnidome weighs less than 1,200 pounds, and the Survival Dome checks in at 2,200 pounds. What is perhaps most fascinating about the spheres is how quickly they can be assembled by, say, five men. This one took a little under an hour. Of course, this was the first dome they'd ever seen, and with a little practice, a smaller crew can assemble them even faster. Not only that, they stack and pack neatly and can be shipped anywhere in the world where there's a need. Terrence O'Malley, the Alaska Network, in Juneau.